Shower eyes up, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you because we know you are present here with us. And we know that your presence will bring light and will bring understanding. We are praying, Lord, that you assist us in the teaching of today. That you will profit your people tonight in the study in Jesus' name. For us, those of us who are here and for our brethren all over the city of Lagos and all over Nigeria and outside, all those who are listening at this time, we are praying, O oh Lord, as we are mightily present with us here, you will be mightily present with every one of them too in Jesus' name. Bless our leaders, our workers, our members, and our young people, everyone listening, we pray that you bless everyone in Jesus' name. That Lord, today, your word will encourage our hearts. And you'll preserve us by your power and your spirit from all harm and danger. And especially because we know that we're studying the great tribulation at this time. You'll preserve every one of us to be ready for the rapture before that great tribulation in Jesus' name. Bless your people tonight. And bless everyone that will hear even after this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. God bless you. Please be seated. We're in Revelation chapter 13. Last week we studied the first part of Revelation chapter 13. And we've read already from verse 1 all through to verse 10. Today we're looking at Revelation chapter 13 from verse 11. Please open your Bible as we read the Bible together. Revelation chapter 13 reading from verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth, and causeth the earth, and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven, and on, on the earth in the sight of men. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which art the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast shall be killed. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save that is except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And this number is 603 score and 6. That is 666, 666. As we look at this passage, we are coming across a second beast. The first beast we have seen already in chapter 13, verse 1. Please look at your Bible. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his sons ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. This is during the period of the Great Tribulation, as the tyranny and the oppression of political power will reach their climax in the time of the Great Tribulation, so will the deception and the persecution of false religion. In this chapter, you have two great leaders, that is, leaders following after the devil, after Satan. On the one hand, the first beast coming up out of the sea, that is, the Antichrist. On the second hand, the other hand, you have the beast coming out of the earth, that is identified as a false prophet. That is the great false prophet that will be part of the team of Satan and the Antichrist during the time of the great tribulation. And there will be great deception and persecution with false religion at that time. The Antichrist will be the political leader while the false prophet, that is the beast rising up out of the earth, will be the religious leader. 
in what we have studied already in chapter 13 verses 1 to 10 that is revealed unto us that you have the rise of the first beast the antichrist out of the sea that is out of the raging tumultuous sea of chaotic humanity this final tyrant that is the antichrist will rise to rule over the whole world with the authority and the power of the dragon that is of the devil the one we're studying today that is the second beast he'll come out of the earth that means there's a difference between the sea and the earth there's a kind of stability on the on the on the earth and there's a kind of solidity on the earth whereas on the sea there's chaos and there's there are waves and there are storms and these beasts coming out of the earth he'll come to take over the false religion that appeared settled on the face of the earth by the time of the great tribulation these uh, beasts coming out of the earth is identified as the false prophet if you look at chapter 16 verse 13 you will see the activity of this a false prophet and you will see the things he does as he deceives the whole world chapter 13 chapter 16 of the of um, revelation verse 13 and i saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon that is of the devil and of the mouth of the beast that is of the antichrist and now of the out of the mouth of the false prophet that is the second beast that was studying about today and then you read in chapter 19 verse 20 chapter 19 verse 20 and the beast which was taken and within the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had the mark of the beast and them that worshipped this image these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone that means then the final fate of that beast of the false prophet will be the same fate of the antichrist they'll be cast into the lake of fire we're told in chapter 20 verse 10 chapter 20 verse 10 and the devil which deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever that means as the three of them will be walking together the devil the antichrist and the false prophet they too they will suffer the same fate at the end of that great revelation they will be cast into the lake of fire and now we're told that this unholy trail will try to counterfeit the holy trinity the dragon that is satan is anti-god opposed to god blaspheming the name of god we studied about him already in chapter 12 of revelation reading verse 3 and verse 4 to remind yourselves of the characteristics and the features of this dragon of this satan the devil that deceives the whole world Look at Revelation chapter 12, reading verses 3 and 4. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, the great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And then you look at verse 9, which gives you a description and the, and the, div and the uh, details of this uh, dragon. And the great uh, dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was cast out of the earth, out, or out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then we have the first beast, that is the Antichrist, the son of perdition. You see the anti the, uh, the devil the dragon is anti god but the beast is antichrist that he is opposed to the son of god and is referred to as the son of perdition if you look at second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians chapter 2 you will see what the bible calls him there in second thessalonians chapter 2 looking at verses 3 and 4 second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 here we're told, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away false, and that man of sin, the son of perdition. 
That's the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We have the dragon, the Satan, Antigod. And then you have the Antichrist, that is the beast, he is opposed to Christ. Now you have the third personality, that is the beast, he is anti-spirit. That is, he is against and opposed to the Holy Spirit. And tries to counterfeit the work of the Holy Spirit. That we have read already in chapter 13 of Revelation verses 11 all through to 15. And uh, this Satan, the master counterfeiter. It will be, his grand purpose and plan will be to deceive all men. And the main function of the Holy Spirit, you know, is to direct praise to the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the case of this beast, the second beast coming out of the earth, that is the false prophet, he will be directing worship of the people to the Antichrist, who is a second person in the unholy trail. And so we understand that during the time of the great tribulation, we know that Satan will function a lot. And we also know that uh, the beast, the first beast, will function a lot together with the one we're looking at today, which is a beast out of the very earth. And as we study all this, the Lord is preparing our hearts, telling us and showing us that the time of the great tribulation is going to be a terrible time. And it's going to be a very dangerous time. And the people that will be alive at that time, it will, the, the suffering will be very much on them. As we look at the deception of this a false prophet today, the topic of the title we're studying is the deceptive miracle walking false prophet. A prophet... A false prophet, miracle working false prophet, but all in it with the intention and the purpose to deceive. The Holy Spirit directs us to all truth, whereas Satan tries to deceive so he can lead us into error. We're dividing the message to their parts today. Number one, the description and the portrait of the false prophet. The description and a portrait of the false prophet. Number two, deception through the power of the false prophet the power that the false prophet will manifest will be to deceive deception through the power of the false prophet number three the demand and persecution by the false prophet it's going to be very terrible on the last days so of the uh, antichrist will take the stage and then the people that will not follow satan that will say they want to worship god the persecution the pain the pressure will be so much upon them let's go step a step at a time number one the description and the portrait of the false prophet please come back to revelation chapter 13 reading from verse 11 and i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly image, deadly wound was healed. Here we learn about this beast. That he is the false prophet. As John continued the vision and was being shown and being told the things that were going to happen. Here we learn that he said, I saw another beast, another but having the same evil intention, another but having the same evil power, another but serving the same devil, another preparing the devil, preparing the people for the devil to serve the devil, preparing to deceive the people. I saw another beast coming out, out of the earth. I need to remind you once again that all the things that will happen at the time of the great tribulation will not just happen suddenly because you see the antichrist he will be a man that's why it's referred to as a son of perdition and by the time of the great tribulation he will not be a baby he would have been in the world he would have been mixing with the people in the world and to be a great political power how will he be a great political power if he had not been known and had not been involved in politics before the time of the rapture because when the rapture takes place the great tribulation will begin immediately and because the great tribulation will begin immediately and the antichrist taking over the son of perdition will not be a baby you understand then he must have been alive at the time when the church was still here but then the press 
presence of the church and the power of the Holy Spirit will be restraining the, the, the great activities of, of that Antichrist. And the same thing you find concerning the false prophet. That the false prophet will not be a person that will be a baby in religion. He will not be an infant. He will be somebody that had already grown up and will have been here during the time of the church. And the Bible says there will be a falling away force. Which means that the, uh, the false prophet will have been preaching. There will be some false prophets rallying around this uh, climax or the epitome or the great, the greatest of the false prophets when he will eventually come out. And the personal attributes are ascribed to this beast because it talks about number one, that beast speaking. Number two, exercising power. Number three, influencing people. Number four, doing great things, wonders, miracles among the people to deceive the people. Number five, deceiving them that dwell upon the face of the earth. Look at verse 11 and see the description of this beast. It says, and I beheld another beast coming out, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. You will see this is exactly what Jesus Christ said when he was still here on earth in, on the Sermon on the Mount. That uh, the false prophets will be like they have sheep's clothing, sheep's appearance, but then inwardly, internally, they will be like ravening wolves. If, if you look at Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You will find that false prophets are always the same on the exterior, on the outside, they look like a lamb. Uh, but they will have on the inside the nature of the dragon the voice of the dragon the characteristics of the dragon the attributes of the dragon and it is to deceive the world he'll put on a pleasing personality or the calmness of a lamb but in reality will have the nature and the wickedness of satan that is of the dragon the false prophet like all false prophets before him will be a great deceiver looking like a lamb and there will be some gentleness around him. There will be some softness about him that is deceptive, deceiving. Let us take note that he has two hands. How about the real lamp of God? You see, when the devil tries to counterfeit what the Lord Jesus is doing, if you are very, very observant, you'll be able to detect the counterfeit. You'll be able to detect the, uh, the, 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 how fake the false one is. Let's come back to Revelation 13 verse 11 again. And I beheld an, another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. As we think of this uh, false lamb, and then we think of the real lamp, the lamp of God. What how many horns does the lamp of God really is depicted to have? Look at Revelation chapter 5, reading verse 6. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as each had been slain. Having how many horns? Tell me out loud seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth into all the earth the real lamp of god has seven horns and that seven is a number for perfection it's a number for totality it's a number for completeness all power on earth and in heaven is given unto me the lord jesus christ said and as jesus said that he showed that he has all authority and all power not only that he has all knowledge because that's why it says having seven eyes and those seven eyes are the seven complete uh, meaning completeness of the power illumination and enlightenment and knowledge and insight of the holy spirit within him as you come back to revelation chapter 13 and you're looking at verse 11 and it says i beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon actually the nature within is the nature of the dragon and uh, this is what uh, the devil does and were the first prophets that appear today that is the first prophets that will be there even at the time before the church goes away before the church is raptured because as i told you before that the antichrist and the events of the great tribulation will cast their shadows before them that some of these things will be happening in miniature form in moderate form in some size in some shape before the time of the great tribulation it is at the time 
time of the great tribulation, everything will really blow out without any limit and without any control. Now, at this time now, let us see what the false prophets try to do. How they try to camouflage. How they try to uh, show us, see if uh, they are for real. In 2 Corinthians chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Reading from verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. They'll call themselves apostles. They'll call themselves prophets, or maybe evangelists, or maybe pastors and teachers. Or maybe they'll call themselves great, great leaders. But it says that they transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. And then we're told in verse, in verse 14, And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. When Satan wants to deceive, he doesn't come as a demon, he doesn't come as a dragon, he doesn't come as the, as the old serpent, he comes as if he were an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. That's the reason we need to take care today. We need to be watchful today because of uh, the, the, the things that the Antichrist will do and because of what the false prophets will do. And the false prophets of today, they are there to deceive. And that is the reason you want to watch so that you are not deceived. Now, how will the false prophet deceive the people of the world? Through the miracles that you have part to perform. In Revelation chapter 16, reading from verse 13 and verse 14. Revelation chapter 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. You'll see three personalities mentioned here. The dragon, the Satan, then the false beast that is uh, that is the antichrist and then you have the false prophet himself and it says it's the same kind of spirit coming out of them and they're like frogs and they are unclean in verse 14 for they are the spirits of devils the spirit coming out of the dragon is of the devil out of the antichrist it's of the devil and the one out of the false prophet is also of the devil for they are the spirits of devils walking miracles walking miracles and there are some people that run after miracles and every anywhere they hear the miracles are being performed they run there and they say well after all it's a supernatural thing that is taking place there if god is not there why will they be performing miracles you need to understand that the devil is not a natural personality it's a supernatural personality and the antichrist will not just have natural power political power alone he'll have supernatural power as well as well now the false prophet will not just depend on psychology on uh, whatever it is philosophy he will also have the power of the devil having the spirit of the devil by which he operates it says in that verse 14 for they are the spirits of the de of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle up to the battle of that great day of god almighty and then we're told in matthew chapter 24 here are the words of jesus christ concerning the days of the great tribulation the days of deception the days when miracles will be performed so as to deceive people and you will hear all over the world that uh, you know here there is a miracle going on here there are miracles going on in the other place there are miracles going on and when you, when you hear about those things and you read them in the newspapers even the details alone will show that these cannot be of the spirit of god because as you compare them with the scriptures there's no righteousness there there's no repentance there there is no holiness there there is no exaltation of the lord jesus christ there and there is no desire to get to heaven there and there is no study of the bible just miracle miracle that will show you then that the source of that miracle is not clean the source is not of god and because the source is not of god that's why you are not going to give yourself giving to them so that you will not be deceived we're told in matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be these are the words of the lord jesus christ himself and he says except those days shall be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened and then it says in verse 23 then if any man shall say unto you look here is christ or there believe it not that he is saved they say you know miracles are taking place supernatural things are taking place and because these miracles and supernatural things are taking place let's go there christ is there and the followers of christ are there and the ministers of christ are there it says don't listen to them don't follow them it will be very serious at the time of the great tribulation and it is still very serious today as many people today are running about i've heard there's a miracle taking place in the other place and some people are going to be inviting you i've gone there and see me now see what i've got a business has changed my wife now is uh, carrying a baby and this is not taking place this is not taking place it says don't go don't run after miracles what's the source of the miracle who are the originators of those miracles? Who are the people perpetrating those miracles? Who are the people working those miracles? Is there the study of the word of God? Is there repentance there? Are backsliders being restored into the faith? Are the people who are receiving those miracles, are they honoring the Lord, glorifying the Lord, exalting the Lord? Are they making restitutions? Are they having transformations and changes in their lives? If not, then you understand that this will not be, that will not be of God. That's why it says in verse 24, For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. They will show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And then in verse 25, behold, I've told you before. That's the Lord Jesus Christ warning us, saying he has told us before. That's why it says in verse 26, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. At the time in which we are living now, we know that the Antichrist already is walking by spirit and is deceiving many, many people. I pray that we will not be deceived in Jesus' name. We're told in 1 John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, looking at verse 18, it says, little children, it's the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, that the Antichrist, that is just one Antichrist, the final one, will come. Even now are there many Antichrists. That's what I told you. That uh, the events of the Great Tribulation will cast their shadows before them. Actually before that Great Tribulation. That's why it says, even now there are many Antichrists whereby we know it is the last time. In chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Beloved Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's the reason that you need to be very careful, because uh, there are lying wonders all around. This lamp-like false prophet is just an imitation. It's a counterfeit. It's a deceiver. He'll be imitating all the things of the Lord and then he will deceive them that dwell on the face of the earth by the means of those miracles that he has power to do. But the Bible refers to those things as lying wonders. Lying wonders. And it will be used to deceive the people on the earth to worship the Antichrist. Look at Second Thessalonians once again. Second Thessalonians reading from chapter 2. Chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Even him whose coming is uh, after the walking of Satan. With all signs and all power and signs and lying wonders. The wonders are supposed to deceive. That's exactly the intention of the devil. Is to deceive the people that are not very observant. And to deceive the people that are looking for miracles at all costs. Miracles that will take them away from heaven. Miracles that will attach them to the devil. Miracles that will destroy their soul. Miracles that will lead them into hell. The people that are looking for miracles, miracles, miracles at all costs, and they will not examine the source and the origin of the miracle, they will go to a direction of perishing. Because eventually we are told, all those who are influenced by those miracles, of the false prophets, they will be doomed, they will be damned, and they will be sent to the lake of fire forever and ever. Look at um, Revelation chapter 14. 
Revelation chapter 14, reading from verse 9. And a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive the mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture, into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night to worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name before i go away from that uh, first point let's just remind ourselves that uh, the the things that uh, the devil does and the things that uh, the antichrist will do and the things that the false prophets will do and the false prophets of today the danger of deception the danger of deception number one there is delusion uh, what that means is that when the devil begins to do those things uh, through the false prophets if you are staying near them and you are staying close to them the first thing will be delusion you'll be saying but oh, what's, what's wrong in this what are they talking about look at this miracle now look at the power now they just talk about holiness 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 all the time and heaven all the time and uh, we don't see this kind of thing look at the power that these people have and then the number one effect upon you will be delusion in jeremiah chapter 23 Jeremiah chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 15. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with one wood, and make them drink the water of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus says the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, it shall have peace. That is, they will be talking to the people that are despising God, dishonoring God, disobeying God. They will say, don't worry you'll have peace there's no problem god is not going to judge you god is a god of grace and then he says and he shall say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart no evil shall be upon you no evil shall come upon you they'll be talking to backsliders they'll be talking to sinners they'll be saying there's no consequence you'll be free do whatever you want to do and that is the mark of false prophets until the people are deluded until they are so deceived they begin to believe a lie for in verse 18 for whom has stood in the counsel of the lord and has perceived and heard his word who has marked his word and heard it behold the whirlwind of the lord is gone forth in fury even a grievous whirlwind it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked the anger of the lord shall not return until he has executed until he has performed the thoughts of his heart in the latter days it shall come ye shall consider it perfectly the number one effect of the deception is that there will be delusion number two there will be distaste for the truth distaste for the truth when you visit the false prophets and you stay in the presence of the false prophets and then they talk about miracles miracles all the time you will grow a distaste a dislike for the word of god for the sound doctrine of the bible when we preach a doctrine when we preach the truth of the word of god when we preach the holiness without which no man shall see the lord you'll not be interested anymore your mind is already turned to another thing that's what we're told in second timothy chapter chapter 4 second timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine they'll have distaste dislike for sound doctrine they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own laws shall they heed to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth they dislike it they don't want it they'll turn their ears away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables number three there'll be a departure from the faith a departure from the faith when these things are happening the effect on the minds of people will be that they'll have departure from the faith in uh, first timothy chapter 4 reading from verses 1 up to first timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith if, if we have only those who are preaching sound doctrine, only those who are preaching the word of God, only those who are preaching the totality of the Bible, it will be difficult for people to turn away from the faith. But when there are so many churches, so many assemblies, and so many false prophets, 
and so many false doctrines and they are backing up the false doctrine with miracles and people they are writing in the papers and you are hearing it over the radio it's on television it's on cassette it's on cd it's on app it's everywhere and people are busy distributing the miracles are taking place leave all these doctrines alone all this holiness holiness that has not uh, given you a wife all the holiness that has not given you a husband all the holiness you have not bought a car all the holiness you have not uh, got a children leave all that alone we're talking about miracles come and see wonder and then the minds of people are turned away from the truth and then those who are saved before they will they will give up and they'll be departing from the faith the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils speaking lies in hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron it will be like uh, you know their hearts are seared with a hot iron number four uh, the result of such a deception is that there will be divine displeasure divine displeasure the lord will be against them and the lord will show his fury his anger his wrath his indignation his judgment against uh, such people and all the people that run after them jeremiah chapter 23 again in jeremiah chapter 23 reading from verse 25 I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesied lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. They cause my people to forget my name and forget my covenant and forget my statutes and forget my doctrine and forget my demand my requests upon their lives which cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor and as their fathers have forgotten my name for bear and then he tells us in verse in verse 30 therefore behold i am against the prophet says the lord divine displeasure divine displeasure i mean against the prophet says the lord that use their tongues and say uh, that uh, uh, that steal my words everyone from his neighbor number five there will be death and destruction death and destruction and that destruction will be sudden in a uh, first thessalonians chapter five first thessalonians chapter five when a deception comes then the people they're deluded already and they are saying no problem anymore god is a god of love there's no judgment there's no wrath and all they're talking about antichrist and they're talking about this and that is this one antichrist the one walking miracle is this one antichrist the one that is giving us food is this one antichrist the one that is blessing our lives is this antichrist the one that is making peace with us and while they're saying peace peace sudden destruction will come upon them in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape finally there will be damnation damnation in second timothy chapter second second thessalonians chapter 2 second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness the, the final thing is that there will be damnation that's the danger of the deception number one delusion number two distaste dislike for the truth number three departure from the faith number four divine displeasure number five death and destruction number six damnation uh, that's the reason why you need to be what way it says here that they all might be damned the false prophets and the people that follow them they are the people to be damned it is not only the false prophet the climax and the greatest of the false prophets the one that is still to come not only that one that will be cast into the lake of fire but all the false prophets prophets that ever deceived anyone into error they will be cast into the lake of fire too because they'll have damnation on the final day second peter chapter 2 reading from verse 1 second peter chapter 2 from verse 1 but there were false prophets among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you there shall be false teachers among you that's why you need to take care in the districts you need to take care in your community you need to take care anywhere you are any town you go to and sometimes you travel out of town 
and there is no deeper life there you say today is sunday i need to just go to a church and then you enter a church and you see what they're doing you hear what uh, you know they're preaching be very careful you don't give in just easily like that or some of us you know you you have all these uh, international evangelists international churches international preachers especially at this time of uh, internet and this time of in information technology and they're saying that you can have this and you can have that and then you are contacting them you can you know you can buy their cases you can buy this and you can buy that and eventually you are being deceived and being sold into those things and they'll be inviting you to international gatherings international meetings and then they rope you in and by the time you know that you are in the midst of false prophets and you are knee deep and shoulder and head and every everything inside the false doctrine you might be counting the cost it's difficult for you to come out now because you spent so much money there and they are promised you quite a lot and if you back out now are you not going to miss what you have prom what they have promised you already that's why you need to be very careful there shall be false teachers false teachers among you and they will bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that bought them and bring upon them so swift destruction and many shall follow their pernicious ways uh, by me by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of and through covetousness shall they with faint words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation their damnation their damnation slumbereth not and that's the reason we're careful that's the reason we're not running around everywhere we hear that you know somebody is performing miracles somewhere that tells us of the description and the portrait of the false prophet we go to point number two deception through the power of the false prophet deception through the power of the false prophet i come to revelation chapter 13 in revelation chapter 13 we're looking at verse 13 through to verse 15 revelation chapter 13 verse 13 and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by by the means of those miracles miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the bees saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the bees which had the wound by a sword and did live and he had power to give life unto the image of the bees that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that and, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed uh, that's the power of the false beast and that's the reason you have real authority to be able to deceive them these end time false prophets with a composite a picture of a lamb and dragon combined together having the appearance of a lamb and the nature and the power of the dragon we're told number one he exercises all the power of the antichrist all the power of the false beast number two he had power to give life to the image of the beast when people see that they're going to be seen if you say that this is not of god see the power of this of this prophet of this great man this is the great power of god see he's even able to give life unto image the image of of the beast and then number three he'll have power to do miracles and wonders in the sight of the beast number four he will also do great wonders so that he will make fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of the people but the purpose of the miracles will be not to deliver people from the judgment of god not to lead people to repentance and it is not to lead people to experience of salvation or the experience of sanctification the purpose of the miracle is not to be, make us be like christ the purpose of the miracle is not to exalt the lord almighty the purpose of the miracle will not be to worship the lord in truth and in spirit the purpose of the miracle will be to deceive people and lead them to eternal suffering he will deceive them that dwell on the face of the earth and they will cause the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the false beast the source of the power of the false prophet is the dragon 
because that's what we're told in that passage we have read already that is it is the devil supplying the power to this false prophet to to work the miracles and many times uh, you will not know even the false prophets of today the ones that you hear are not just uh, using verbal things or just the word uh, to deceive people not just that they are clever in speaking as orators but they really have some kind of power and then the people that go there, you know, they're putting pressure upon you all the time. It's maybe your husband has gone there. And your husband is putting pressure on you. If you don't follow me to this place, I'm telling you, this man has, is the great power of God. I've never seen such miracle in my life before. I watched them. I was there. I got near. I went near their platform, near their altar. And I saw the miracles like this with my naked eyes. And, uh, you know, the way they catch the witches and the wizards. And the way they point them out. And those people roll on the ground and then they urinate on themselves right there in the public and they tear their cl clothes right there in the public when the power of God begins to walk my wife let us go and then you say no I will not go and eventually your husband may turn from gentleness to violence and he says if you don't follow me to this place there will be no peace in this house if you don't follow me to this place it is because you are afraid you are a witch and you are the one disturbing the family and you are disturbing our business that's the reason you are afraid you don't want to get there because you know that if you go there they are going to spot you out to say I'm sorry I don't want to go there a this is false it is not based on the Holy Spirit on the power of the Lord Jesus Christ how do you know how do you know you must follow me there and eventually if you are not careful if you go there and then they catch you and then you are not able to come back again and then you are hooked there and you are held down there and then you begin to drink their water and you begin to rub with their oil and you begin to repeat their things and you begin to carry their pictures about and you begin to read their materials and you begin to pray with their prayer book already you are gone and for you to come back it might be another miracle to be able to bring you back the purpose of the false prophet of that day that is of the time of the great tribulation is not different from the purpose of the false prophets of today it is to make people slaves of satan it is to make people servants of the devil it is to make people the worshippers of the antichrist and then they will take the mark of the beast of the beast and they become irredeemable it will be impossible to redeem them thereby making them to suffer eternal punishment with satan in hell fire forever and ever and as you look at this, you understand, we've read it already, but let's, let's read it again. In Revelation chapter 16, verse 13, it says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and of the mouth of the beast, and of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, if you are not a person like John the Beloved, if you are not a person that God will open your eyes to see, when you go to those places, you will not see the evil spirits coming out of their mouths when they give the command. You will not see the evil spirits walking along with them. But John, because the Lord opened his eyes, he saw the evil spirits like frogs coming out of their mouth. And then it says in verse 14, For they are the spirits of devils, walking miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth. It will capture the kings. And sometimes today you'll find that a king or a chief or a political leader might go to some of these meetings. And then they will go there and then they will, uh, the newspaper will broadcast everything, publish everything and say, you know, great man of great man in society, he was there. And the director of this particular company is gone there too. And the chief and the obas and the obis and the kings and the rulers, they've gone there too. And those people too, they'll be giving testimonies and they allow their testimonies to be written. The papers and then in your mind you are saying well these are kings these are professors and these are great men in society and they've gone there already and so if they have gone there and they have seen miracle and they are testifying about it why shouldn't i go they will deceive the kings of the earth because it says which go forth to deceive unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world of the whole world you hear that some people are coming white people they're coming from america they're coming from britain they're coming from all over europe and they're coming from all the or different parts of the world and they're going to this place and then they're taking cassettes and videos away to their countries and they're saying we have seen power we have seen power that man he has real real power and then you begin to say since all the whole world they are going there and they're seeing something why don't i go there also and at least see 
I, at least I know the Bible and I've learned some things. They cannot deceive me. Let me go and see what they are seeing. And then when you get there, the devil is not a dummy. And the devil is not a foolish, a dumb fellow. He knows how to catch people. Once you have taken that step and the first step and you are there, then you are lost forever. Because it says it is to gather them to battle the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And that's why you want to be very careful. You, you don't want uh, to just, just follow people doing things or going places you do not understand. Because uh, the final scene or the final end of the people, here is what it will be, chapter 19, verse 20. Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And a beast was taken. And with them the first, the, the first prophet that wrought miracles before him, which deceived, with which he deceived them that at the mark of the beast, and them that worship the, his image, these bulls were cast alive into, the lake, into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That's the end of the first prophet. That's the end of the people that do not uh, follow after righteousness. That's the, the end of the people that do not follow after the sound doctrine, the transforming doctrine of the word of God. And they prefer to follow the things that will deceive. In chapter 20 verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, which where the beast and the false prophet are, that and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Again, let me remind you, as you hear about miracles, you, you ought to ask yourself, what's the purpose of the miracles? What is the purpose of the miracles? Uh, because it is the purpose that actually determines, uh, you know, the origin. In the case of God, his purpose is to lead us to repentance. His goodness is to lead us to repentance and to submit to him so that he can save us and so that eventually he can take us to heaven. His purpose is to make us know that he is God and Christ is Savior and the Holy Spirit is a comforter and that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, they are interested in changing our life, transforming us and taking us to heaven. The manifestation of the power of God, a miraculous manifestation is to make us turn away from evil and turn to the Lord. But in the case of this uh, Antichrist, in the case of the devil, the dragon, in the case of the beast, the false prophet, what is the purpose? Let's look at them one by one. Number one, uh, the purpose of the miracles of the false prophets is to harden the heart. It is to harden the heart. Uh, you check up on the people that have gone to these uh, false places and they have seen, they have said that we'll see miracles, we'll see miracles. Their hearts are hardened. And they will not listen to the truth anymore. The miracle alone so hardens them that they will not want to see the truth. They will not want to know the truth. And they don't want to listen to you if you are bringing the truth unto them. In Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 10. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh. And did so as the Lord had commanded, and Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and he became a serpent. And Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt they also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods and he hardened Pharaoh's heart and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord has said hardened Pharaoh's heart if uh, those magicians and sorcerers and the wise men of Egypt if they were not able to do to duplicate what Moses and Aaron had done maybe his mind would have been softened but when he called the sorcerers he said see what Aaron and Moses see what they have done they cast the rod down and it became serpent. This is a great miracle, a great wonder. The magician said, hold on. And then they threw their own down. It became serpents as well. Even though the serpent of uh, the serpent of the rod of Aaron swallowed up their rods, all the same, it hardened his heart. The purpose of the miracles that these four prophets perform is to harden hearts. And if you have got friends or relatives or backsliders who have been in this church before, and now they have gone astray to some of these uh, false places where they say they are seeing miracles, when you talk to them, they are hardened. As you talk about repentance, you talk about restitution, you talk about righteousness, you talk about holiness, they will be talking about the miracles they see over there. 
They say, what? Well, don't commit sin. Don't, don't, uh, don't sin against God with your mouth. You have not been there. I have been there. I see what is happening there. And don't tell me that it's only in deeper life. You are hearing the word of God. You have Bible. You have doctrine. You have everything. But look at the miracles that are taking place. They are hardened because of the evil sin that is upon them already. Number two, hatred for the truth. Hatred for the truth. All those miracles, the purpose of the devil is to make the people hate the truth of the word of God. And that's why you need to be very careful. You need to watch your own heart. As you are hearing the word of God, if you are no more eager like you were reading the Bible, reading the tracts, reading the third scripture booklet and reading the books that have been published and hearing the cases and you you just you say just just put them aside put them aside i i need other things i want other things if you're having hatred for the truth it is the impact and the effect of the deception of the miracles of the false prophets in second thessalonians again i'm reading from chapter 2 verse 9 second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 even him who's coming it's after the walking of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love for the truth, the love of the truth that they might be saved. The love of the truth will no more be in their heart. It will be hatred for the truth. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Number three, it is to hinder repentance and redemption. It is to hinder repentance and redemption. And we're told in Revelation chapter 9, Revelation chapter 9, reading from verse 20. Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship the devils and the idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, neither repented they of their murders and nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Uh, those uh, miracles, the purpose of the devil is to hinder you from repentance and redemption. What are we repenting of? We need money, we've got the money. I need a wife, I've got the wife. We need children, we've got children. We need a job, we've got a job. We want our enemies to die, our enemies have died. And we want uh, the people that are trading with us, uh, when we cheat them for something to blindfold them, so they will not see. And everything is happening. We're having our way. We're having our profit. Everything is going our way. What have I got repentance? To, what have I got to do with repentance? All those miracles, the purpose of the miracles is to hinder repentance and redemption. Then number four, it is to heighten and increase your suffering. It is to heighten and increase suffering. And the people that are deceived by those miracles of the false prophets, it will increase their suffering in Jeremiah chapter 28. Jeremiah chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 12. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet. After that, Ananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from up the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Ananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou hast made for them yokes of iron. You see, the yokes of wood will be broken. That is, the people that, you know, fell, that, you know, this Christian life, self-denial sacrifice separation from the world how can i endure that it's like you know the yoke of the lord that is easy the yoke of wood is uh, taken away and these uh, false uh, lying wonders will create a yoke of iron for you for thus says the lord in verse 14 the lord of hosts the god of israel i have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations that they will serve nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon and they shall serve him and i have given him the bees of the field also so, then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Ananiah, the prophet, Hear now, Ananiah, the Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest these people to trust in a lie. Thou makest these people to trust in a lie. Uh, that is uh, the uh, things that the people do, those false miracles will make you to trust in a lie and actually will bring a uh, heightened, uh, heightened suffering number five it is to make you honor the seducer and reject the savior you will honor the seducer you will honor the false prophet you will honor the people that
that are leading you astray and then you will reject the savior in mark chapter 13 verse 22 mark chapter 13 verse 22 for false Christs and false prophets shall arise, shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the very elect. But take heed, behold, I foretold you all things. All those miracles of the false prophets will make the people that believe those miracles to honor the seducer and to reject the Savior. Number six is to hook and to hold souls for hell. That is, once you get there, and they get you interested they hold you down and it's like a hook you are just there and they pin you down there and they keep you down there for hell fire that's exactly what will happen on the last days when the false prophet when he begins to work all those miracles it will hook those people down hold them down until they receive the mark of the beast and eventually they get into hell fire revelation chapter 13 reading from verse 13 and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire to come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live for and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause her, that as many as would not worship the beast the image of the beast shall be killed and then in chapter 14 verse 9 chapter 14 reading from verse 9 here it tells us and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the one of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name well the Lord has warned us so that we will not be attracted and will not be taken away or blown away by the deception of uh, the false prophets because of the miracles that they have power to perform we come to point number three the demand and persecution by the false prophet the demand and the persecution by the false prophet we come to revelation chapter 13 we're reading the last three verses there verse 16 all through to verse 18 and it causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save except he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. For his no, and his number is six hundred three score and six. That is six hundred and sixty six. Six six six. Here we are told about uh, this uh, antichrist and about uh, the false uh, prophet as well. And you see, as we get near to the time of the end, the stage is being set for the antichrist and the false prophet. You uh, see what it says over here. It causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their for in their right hand and or in their foreheads. Now, as you read about uh, this, if uh, people were to read this many, many years ago, they might be wondering, how will this happen? But you see, at the time in which we are living now, it is not possible to buy food or even to buy an assortment of other things without money, without checks, or without a credit card or charge cards. Planting a chip, you see the progression that the people of the world, the scientists are having in the area of uh, technology. And right now they can plant a chip in somebody's hand or even on the forehead and give him a mark of identification in the right hand or in the forehead in order to buy or to sell. That is now possible. 
in the west uh, you know you, you can just uh, pass through uh, that thing and once you run your hand uh, through the gadget there all the information about your date of birth about uh, where you are living about uh, your salary about your bank account and all that you have everything is right there because of the chip they are able to put in your hand not only that uh, right now it is possible in fact they are using it in some places that they can put a chip on you and then all the identification of where you are will be right there and uh, for example the, you know there are some armies in the world in intelligence that use that and they'll plant that chip in one of their soldiers some important personalities in there among them and then if they kidnap them and they put them in a, in a prison somewhere in any country they'll be able to read all the details in their in their laboratory because of the chip they are planted in them and you see the stage is being set already 100 years ago all this is, was not possible 50 years ago all this was not possible but all these things are possible now which is telling us that the time of the antichrist to really come out and be putting all these marks the time is very near but thank god before that actually takes place in a massive form the church will be gone i said the church will be gone and by the grace of god we will be part of the church that will be raptured away in jesus name the point is the vast possibilities in this age of information technology is repair they are preparing the stage for the events of revelation chapter 13 the mark of the beast indicates that the one wearing that mark is a worshiper of the beast and that he has submitted himself to the rule of the antichrist and to the rule of the dragon uh, to be without the mark they will label that person as a traitor I see it everybody is falling down. I see it everybody is submitting. I see it everybody is cooperating and you are not cooperating. And the punishment will be that you will not be able to buy or sell. Except you have the mark of the beast or the mark of the antichrist. And uh, because of that getting food, that will be difficult having light paying for your light that will be difficult and if it is a hot you want a air con you'll not be able to have that because you cannot pay for the meter except you have the mark and if you're living in a very cold uh, country and uh, you need heater in your room you'll not be able to pay for that because you have not taken the mark of the beast it's either they will force you and kill you if you don't yield or you'll be starved to death or the cold will just uh, freeze you to death or the situation and when you don't have money you are not able to buy anything and you say please i want to buy it they say where is your mark have you taken your mark if you have not taken your mark then you cannot buy the people who do not have the mark of the beast will suffer although it is actually suffering temporary suffering because the people that take the mark of the beast they are the people that will suffer forever and ever in the lake of fire and the bible tells us that the mark of the beast is six 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 the only sure way to escape uh, from uh, is to be genuinely saved today and to live for christ and to endure until the very end i've read it to you but let me read it again in chapter 14 reading from verse 9 if anybody will take the mark of the beast the uh, what will happen to that person and the, the destruction and the death and the damnation that will come upon that person chapter 14 verse 9 and he saw the angel followed them saying with a loud voice if any man if any man worship the beast or his image and receive the mark on his forehead or his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation now here we are thank god that we read the bible thank god that we know the bible ask the average church goer today they do not know anything about all these things that were studying. They do not know the chapter and the verse. And they do not know the consequence of taking the mark of the beast. Do you know that after the rapture has taken place and the saints of God have gone, there will be many religious people still left behind here. And they have never heard, they have never read the book of Revelation. And they do not know the things that will actually happen at the time of the great tribulation. They will just be hearing over the radio or over their television or see it over the internet as they browse all these things. And they will be hearing 
hearing there's a world leader now he's making peace with Israel he's making peace in the Middle East he's joining Palestine and Israel together and it's not successful all the uh, peace uh, deal that they have been trying to make and the treaties that never worked this man now as a political leader has come he's united everybody together they are now sitting on the table of brotherhood there is peace all over the world the economy is improving also and every country is going to have their part in this economy and then there's announcement if you want to buy now they want to centralize all the commercial things and all the financial things and all the banking system they want to centralize everything you will go to this location this location to go and take a mark and when you take the mark it will it will free you from poverty it will free you from any need and therefore you, you go there there will be no work at all throughout this week we're going to give chance to everybody now because you need to register everybody needs to register if your children are going to school you are going to pay the school fees of your children your children will have to show their own mark and the parents that are going to pay their school fees will have to show their own mark if your children are going to get visa they are going to travel abroad they are going to have scholarships scholarship is now available you can study in Israel you can study in Europe you can study in America you can study anywhere and then all the poor countries of the world you can send your people to the places they will study and then let us give them scholarship but the only condition is you'll take the mark and they will not say it's the mark of the devil they will not say it is the mark of uh, you know of a wicked person you say it is a mark that sets you free you don't need to carry bank accounts and you don't need to carry wallets about you don't need to carry bags about currency about the people will steal away from you just take the mark and all the accounts is now recorded in the bank life is easier everything is okay now and religious people church going people they'll be going there they never read about anything of the mark of the antichrist and they will even be publicizing and promoting it i've taken my own mark have you taken yours i've taken my mark and i went to the supermarket i went everywhere i'm able to buy anything now and i don't carry checkbook i don't sign anything they don't tell me in the bank now that my signature is not regular i just I go there and i buy whatever i want and the mark is even hidden here and nobody can steal my money anymore because everything now is in the mark in my forehead you cannot see but the computer can see it they'll be rejoicing in their destruction they'll be rejoicing in their perdition i pray you will not be here at that time in jesus name because it's going to be a great terrible thing for the people of the world at that time that's why the lord is telling you in proverbs chapter 22 proverbs chapter 22 i'm reading to you from verse 3 proverbs chapter 22 verse, verse 3 a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself but the simple pass on and they are punished a prudent man a wise man will foresee all these evil things that are going to come upon the world and you will hide yourself from the danger from the destruction from the damnation that is about to come and you will be looking at it that well lord i don't want to be on the earth when these things shall be taking place in uh, osea chapter 14 osea chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 9 osea chapter 14 verse 9 uh, he tells us uh, here about the wisdom that we need to have who is wise and he shall understand these things only the wise people who want to escape hell who want to escape the judgment of god will understand these things and prudent prudent and he shall know them for the ways of the lord are right and the judge shall walk in them but the transgressors shall fall therein the people that are still playing with sin and they're living in sin and all these warnings the bible is the giving is giving us they're not taking anything to heart they're just living like, like their lives like yesterday like last week like last month and they may hear the word of god but after hearing the word of god it's like they never had anything it's like they never had that the rapture can take can take place anytime and they're not making preparation but the wise are saying huh, with all the things we see with all the things we hear and the stage is being set for the antichrist i'm going to get ready i'm going to prepare myself in deuteronomy Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 29 Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 29 oh that they were wise that they understood this that they would consider their latter end the wisdom the Lord is calling us to, to today is that we'll consider our latter end because all these things were saying it is coming it is coming it is coming one day it will come 
the rapture will take place. The church will be gone. And then the great tribulation will begin. What are you going to do if you are not prepared at that time? And uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. Reading from verse 12 and from verse 13. Matthew chapter 24 verses 12 and 13. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You know, when you first became a Christian, you heard about the coming of the Lord. You were zealous. You were on fire. When you first got converted, you heard about the rapture, about the resurrection of the dead, about the great tribulation, about the suffering of the people that are going to be left behind. You prayed with zeal. You prayed with earnestness. You prayed with fervency. You do not want to be left behind. You went back home. You told your children, children, I don't want to give back to children and throw them to the devil. I don't want to give back to children and then they will be the children of hell. I and my, I and my children, we're going to serve the Lord, father, mother, and children children you held hands together you prayed and your children prayed you remember those children how they prayed at the age of eight at the age of nine at the age of 13 how they prayed and they cried and then you got uh, the, the maybe the cassette or the film of uh, born in hell and you showed it in uh, you know in the district and the people prayed and they cried and there was zeal and enthusiasm evangelism holiness restitution and they began to confess to, to one another i'm sorry my brother i don't know the rapture may take place before I wake up tomorrow I'm sorry for what I did the other time What I said the other time I'm sorry please forgive me And we cleaned up our lives And now after some years And the Lord Jesus has not come And he has given us some time to evangelize more And some time to pray more And some time to seek the face of the Lord more Now we relax and the love of many shall wax cold. Then it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. At the time of the end, when the Lord is about to come, the devil will be causing the spirit of slumber. In, the men, in many people that have known the Lord before, the spirit of carelessness and the spirit of talkativeness and the spirit of prayerlessness will be just coming upon many people that were fervent before. And the spirit of money making, money making covetousness, what they are running after money, 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 women and wife and husband and children and traveling and days and that, that's what they'll be running after. And then the spirit is just blowing the cold water on them and the, the cold breeze on them so that they will sleep up and they will not remember when the Lord will come but for us God will wake us up and God will keep us watching and praying so that that day will not come upon us on our way in Jesus name you see the devil he will use some things number one he will use falsehood at the time of the great tribulation and even before the great tribulation number one he will use falsehood deceiving people and uh, they are not the kind of lies you can easily tell. I don't know whether some people have ever deceived you before. And he came to you and told you a story. And the story looked believable. And even though you are a Christian, saved and sanctified and spirit-filled, it's like you accept it. You almost put your, more, your hand in the pocket and give them all the resources that you have uh, to make them go and do. They've seen this a new business and it's going to double your money for you. And there's no fraud here. There's, and, they and they speak convincingly falsehood i don't know whether you've been deceived before the falsehood is going to be multiplied at a higher stage at a higher level at the time of the great tribulation number two false the devil will use force and the antichrist will use force and the false prophet will use force that if you don't submit if you don't take the mark of the antichrist now now if you don't take the mark and uh, you see what will happen to you and when they put the gun behind you they want to kill you by force then you say what am i going to do now number three they'll use finance finance that is money all your money is there in the, man, in, the, in, the, in the bank. And you cannot withdraw one naira because you have not taken the mark of the Antichrist. And they say, but it's my money. I work for it. I put all the money. Yes, we know. We, we, we've reorganized and changed all the banking system. And if you're going to withdraw money now, you have to, we have to know. And all we're, we're, we're getting rid of paper, paper, paper. You know, all these files and files we used to work with in the 1990-something, 2002, 2004, 
a paperwork was too much. Now we're dealing with technology. Now we're dealing with computer. And the way we operate in the bank, now you take the mark and then we sit in your hand or in your forehead and then you're able to withdraw your money. They will use your, they will use finance to tie you down that you will not be able to withdraw even the money that you have. What are you going to do? Well, the falsehood and the false and the finance, number four is famine famine because there'll be no food to eat and because there's no food to eat there'll be a local famine in your own family and your children will be crying and say daddy you don't love us anymore mommy you don't love us anymore you're, you're talking about bible talking about revelation chapter 13 because of that you are not going to give us food everybody is hungry in this family and you will not go and take care of the mark so that you say you have money in the bank where is the money go and get the money when all your children are crying and there is no food and there is famine what are you going to do will you not eventually surrender and submit number five they use fear they use fear because there'll be people going around and campaigning for the devil and they'll be campaigning for the antichrist have you taken your mark or are you that religious fanatic that will not cooperate with everybody what do you say you are doing and when you are not able to sleep you are not able to rest and you are hungry and there's no money for anything and they use force and fear and finance and falsehood and farming on you and then there'll be flattery flattery they will you know the antichrist will come over the radio and flatter the people that have submitted and praise them and then the people that have not submitted those are the traitors those are the stubborn ones and those are the enemies of society and then the other people that have submitted they are the good good people everywhere you go have you got a man have you got a man ah, he has not got a religious not religious fanatic everybody will be insulting and abusing what are you going to do at that time are you going to be able to stand at that time this is the time to worship the lord and the lord is telling us that he's coming soon and because he's coming soon he says he that shall endure to the end the same shall be saved and that's why i'm pleading with you don't worry about the little suffering that you are going through today they are nothing compared with what will happen at the time of the great tribulation my prayer for you is that you'll be ready when the lord will come you will be ready when the Lord will come. You get saved and you get sanctified. You get holy. And then without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Whatever the persecution, whatever the problem today, you say, Lord, I will stand. Lord, I will stand. The devil may do his worst today. It's nothing compared with what is going to happen at the time of the great tribulation. But thank God the grace of God is sufficient for you. I said the grace of God is sufficient for you. Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I don't want to be here at the time of the great tribulation. I don't want to be here at a time when they're using force and they're using falsehood and they're using fear and they're using finance and they're using farming and they're using flattery and they're compelling people to worship the devil and then taking them to hell. I don't want to be here at that time. I want to get saved today. I want to remain saved today and I want to remain sanctified today. And it's not only me with my wife, with my husband, with my children. Where will you be when all these things will be taking place? When the church is raptured and the church is taken to heaven where will you be husband where will you be wife where will you be children where will you be parents where will you be at that time when the devil will be on stage when the devil will be ruling and reigning over everybody will you be among the number that have really known the lord that are serving the lord among the number that are actually worshiping the lord today and then the lord will look at you when he comes and i'll say that's one of my people that's one of my people and then he will take you to heaven all the people that miss the rapture there is no hope for them there is no hope for anybody here if you miss the rapture the terrible tribulation that will come the persecution that will come and all the pressure of the world that will come are you going to escape on that day if you are going to escape today is that day if you are going to get saved today is that day if you're going to commit yourself to the lord today is that day if you're going to ask for grace to continue to the very end today is that day remember the love of many shall wax cold 